Hi, Emma. My name is Therese from Nerdophiles. How are you? I'm good. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Um, so I'm just going to kick it off. Uh, I really loved this movie and I love that when you're creating a period piece, there's a lot of things that we can pull inspiration from. So I'd love to know what were your biggest influences and touchstones that you drew from that yeah. don't have to be callbacks to period pieces even. Well, they really genuinely aren't. So it's nice that you you said that because actually the bigger, you know, in terms of story and um, the sort of rom-com element of it, you know, I was actually really like harking back to those great 90s rom-coms, which I felt, you know, have been missing for a while. So I'm a big Richard Curtis fan. I'm a big Nora Ephron fan. So in terms of like emotional story and, you know, emotional storytelling, that was massively, you know, a huge... Uh, sort of inspiration and thing. I was trying to capture that sort of feeling. Um, and then visually, obviously, visually, I was very inspired by a number of amazing filmmakers. I mean, Tony Miller and I, the cinematographer, we studied, you know, Barry Lyndon at length. We studied, you know, obviously, Joe Wright's Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Ang Lee's version, so many of them. And, um, you know, we really wanted to create a look that was super naturalistic and a little bit more rustic and not too poppy and not too commercial and sort of juxtapose that with the very sort of commercial, emotional storytelling. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know that this first came out as a short film. And I really want to know what challenges did you face when it comes to adapting that and expanding that story? Um, what, you know, what were some of your struggles, at least? Well, the, the I actually, the feature script I already had in our hands when we made the oh, okay. Film. So we found, uh, well, I, I first discovered the script um, when it was on a uh, Blacklist podcast, which was Table Reads, of, of highly rated scripts. And, you know, so very much fell in love uh, with the material. But the producers uh, and I very much realized that, you know, first time feature director, uh, first time screenwriter, like we, we really needed to kind of create a proof of concept. So the short film actually was secondary. So the idea was to make something that was undeniably financeable. And um, so, when we approached that, I actually said to Suzanne, I really think what the short film should be is the the date that basically goes wrong and the motivation <laughs> for the entire story. And so that was sort of the thinking behind that. But then obviously as we developed uh, the feature after the short film experience, I realized that that scene is actually very uh, pinnacle mm. um, to the whole uh, motivation of uh, Julia's plot and the whole story. So I, we actually ended up reshooting re a lot of the stuff from the short and putting it in the feature because it was so key um, to the storytelling. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm really curious to hear about your working relationship with Suzanne and, you know, how did the two of you collaborate when it came to developing the story that she'd already written as a book? So the book was obviously a um, self-published novel. So the book um, wasn't something I had read or, or, or knew of when I found the script. So it really came at it from finding the script. And the, you know, the book is actually, there's a lot more that happens in the book. I have, I've always said you could almost make a mini series out of Malcolm's List <laughs> because there's so much that goes on in the book that doesn't go in the movie. Um, but obviously my take on this world and my take on this material was not what was in the novel or not necessarily what was in the script. So it was really important to me to be able to sort of develop this and polish the script and, and, and sort of push it in a way that felt like I could really make it mine and make it this, uh, this casts as well. I think it's really important um, to flag that even, you know, the actors were hugely involved in the development process. You know, um, it was very important to all of us that this never became gimmicky. You know, these characters were written as white people and a lot of that development process was rewriting a lot of those character traits and those backstories and making it really work for this cast. So actually mm -hmm. it was a huge development process on, you know, my side and Suzanne was super gracious in really letting me you know, make my mark and and take, you know, her original material and do something quite, quite different with it. Yeah, I mean, I really love seeing a diverse cast, especially in a space that we normally don't see. We normally see more white actors taking on period pieces. Uh, obviously that's changed a bit in the recent years, 
but can you elaborate a little bit more about this collaboration with the actors and if there was any uh, significant moments in your memory that really stand out? Well, yeah, I think, you know, as I was saying, it's, it's super important that, you know, Selena Dalton felt like Frida Pinto's, you know, it, it, it was, Selena was written uh, as a white character and we chose to cast the film and develop the film and turn it into something different. And I, you know, that came across all levels of design work within the film. So not just on the page, not just in the writing, not just in the acting, it was the sets, the costumes, the hair, the makeup, like how do we really make this world theirs? you know, and that was my approach. And all the amazing designers who worked on the film uh, were absolutely incredible at that. So like a really lovely example I can give you is if you look at Dalton Cottage and you look at all the color schemes, we painted those walls, all the reds, the mustards, the browns, the oranges. It's those, those all those sort of tones and colors inspired by like Indian spices and spice markets and art from the time. And, you know, it was about also within the visuals, making this as culturally rich and aware as our cast. And, you know, the uh, another great one actually, that was one of my favorites was Donna Kroll, who plays Lady Kilborn, who is phenomenal in the movie. And we were, we, me and Eileen Buggy, the hair designer, had a lot of conversations about what we do with, you know, our biggest lady of the society <laughs> sort of crowd's hair. And obviously there's, you know, there was chats about wigs and all sorts of things like that. And Donna has locks. And I was very, very much like, I want to keep her locks. I want this to be hers. And then her and Eileen went away. And I remember when she walked out of the trailer and they had turned her locks into a period hairstyle. And I was like, that's what this world is about. Amazing. Well, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'm really curious, uh, as a lover of romance novels myself, I'm always interested in speaking to people who develop these types of stories. Do you read any historical romance novels or have any favorite stories that you like to return to? Um, I did in the past. I, I think it's really important uh, uh, to you know mention I, I, I love you know, uh, period film, but I was never some big Regency buff, you know? I was really looking, as I said, for that sort of, that 90s rom-com fun, feel-good movie. And, you know, I got to go on an incredible journey of research and read a lot of stuff and really get familiar, you know, with the time period and, and all those elements. But I actually read a lot of historians' work and a lot of like modern scholars' take on the history. And because I really wanted to build mm -hmm. out the world, I wanted to get the girls out of just having lots of cups of tea and waiting for the men to call. I really wanted the girls to like enjoy London society life. So, you know, all the horse auctions and the croquet scenes and the shoot scenes, that was all, that all came from speaking to different historians and reading about the era and, and, and allowing our ladies into a man's world, you know, breaking all those uh, rules down. But more to your question, I am named after Jane Austen's Emma. That was my mum's favorite book. So I have read Emma, not in a while, but I've always had a copy on my bedside table because it is what my name is inspired <laughs> by. Well, I love Emma. Um, she's one of the best meddlers in, uh, in literature. And I really wanna thank you for speaking with me today. I really, really enjoyed the film. I thought it was such a delight, especially um, seeing the cast working together and seeing sort of the the snippiness back and forth in the dialogue. I really enjoyed that. And um, yeah, thank you for speaking with me. No, thank you. It was lovely. Have a lovely evening. You too.